The banking world is very stressful. It was in the year 2008 financial crisis, so many banks worldwide closed. At that time, I was 53. I thought maybe I just quit. And then I thought hospice seems to be quite a good place to have out. I just continue until today. I'm a visual volunteer who accompany patients in their active dying days. The mum has a depression and dementia. When we are dealing with the patient in the hospice, you also need to be very patient in dealing with them. I practice patient, you know, and I learn a lot of love from hospice. You know. So I learned that, you know, from the same concept, I also apply to my mother. The difference between the working and the hospice work is that when you're in a corporate life, you tend to see beautiful things. You don't ever think that some other people are suffering. Until I go to hospice, I realize that some of the people are having social issues. So these things makes me reflect that actually there's something needs to be done. Already people have been doing it, but because of our working life, we never pay attention to it. all this sort of our volunteering organization. They are doing good work to help all those terminal ill people who are not so well to do. In words, no one dies alone, and we just basically visual the patient during their final hours when they don't have friends or relatives to be around with them. I did daycare for many years. In the year 2014, I've already been volunteering at the hospice, taking care of the patient in the wards. And then when I heard about this, I wasn't too keen because I was worried about 724 thing, how to cope. When the first time I volunteered, I was like a bit not used to it. Unlike patients in the daycare, I can walk around, I can say hello. This one, you just have to sit there, hold hands. It was difficult to adapt initially, but it goes on, become quite normal. I manage many patients who are dialect speaking. Some of them don't go to school, and then they don't say I love you, this sort of thing. What they say is that it's okay to recuperate at home. I think they miss home a lot. There was a lady who was quite tough to manage. Like, he speak dialect and she's very vulgar and nobody dared to go near to her. She said him. It took me about a week to try to understand. She kept rejecting. She just started to follow me. I would just go after lunch, I'll just bring her to the garden and talk to her. Even though her speech is slow, actually I'm not paying attention now because it became quite quite tiring. Then she pinch you and she say, hey, why are you sleeping? It was so difficult state of taking care. And I was so quite surprised. She was placed under Noda, so the nurse and the doctors would normally monitor the condition every day many times. They say that this patient is gonna go fast. They activate the Noda team to come down. It happened that, you know. After so many quarters, I just hold her hand, she just fade off slowly. It was a peaceful death. It's a meaningful work, a meaningful job. Sometimes we can give fast response to patients, especially they want a urina, they cannot wait. How to wait for the nurses, they don't want to mess up with their diaper. They want a drink, they want to take a spectacle, or they want to call somebody. The nurse cannot be around all the time, so we are there to support them. We are just ordinary people doing ordinary jobs. It's not a big deal, you know. Volunteering to be specific thing, you know, can do this. It's not like that, la. It's just that whether you have time or no time, that's all, la. We are not Mother Teresa, then, you know. Tell you what, after she got to this room, okay. she just sit there for a while. Okay, Uncle, what's all the talk? What is that, Chow Lee? Right up to our level. Kau kau nampu ah. I think we need to talk about them to discuss openly that one has to go. They have to let go, to detach from wherever they love. It's best that everybody start to think about it, that this thing can happen. Let me go.
in the actual event, they are very, very sick. You know that whatever things they do has already been over, and then they have to face that. Personally, after helping her in the hospice, I don't really fear. My fear is suffering, in pain, and all those sort of things. I mean, to die, everybody has to die, right? We guys, we are very fortunate. We take things for granted. We are family members, we come back, the wife, the cat is there to see you, everything is taken care of. Unlike those who have no family members, it's so poor thing. And I see it's important to have family members to be around you. Thank you.